Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of RC Printer. I'm your host Jordan Visco, and today we are going to play around with this guy right here, which is the MK Ultra. So we built our MK Ultra last year. Over the winter here, we haven't played around with it too much. But we did make some upgrades recently to the shocks. So we had Endura shocks on there previously, and now we've upgraded to these G-Made XD shocks, and I like them a lot better. They have much smoother movement, so I'm really excited to get this out on the track and test it out. And another thing I've really been wanting to do as well is upgrade this motor. So this is a brushless 540 uh, kit motor, but it's not censored and it doesn't have too much power. So I'm going to throw in an upgraded motor. So the motor we're going to go with is one of these, which is a Surpass Hobby Rocket V3 uh, brushless censored RC motor. This one's rated at 13.5 turns and we do sell this one at rcprinter.com. And then we're going to pair this motor with this guy right here, which is a Hobbywing Quick Run 10BL120 censored brushless ESC. Now one other thing I wanted to try out here is uh, some different belts. These belts work great. They're hard to find though. These are Schumacher belts and unfortunately they're not really readily available online. I had to find these on eBay and they weren't super cheap and they were hard to get. I have imported these from China and they're HTD belts, uh, HTD three millimeter of the right length. But unfortunately the only size they had was the six millimeter widths. Um, so they're a little bit too thick for this machine. The Schumacher belts that are on there are four millimeters. So I'm gonna see if we can head out to the shop and set up a little jig and see if we can slice these down a bit. So stick around. Okay, so here's a simple little jig I've made in order to try and trim this belt. Basically, it's just a, a two by four locked in the vise here. And I've put some little finishing nails in as a guide so that the belt runs straightly along it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive this uh, pen knife, which has a super sharp brand new blade in it. And we're gonna drive it in at about the two millimeter mark. And then we're gonna pull the belt through it. Hopefully it trims it off all nice and straight. First thing we need to do here is just make sure we're gonna get the pen knife in the right spot. So it wants to be about that far over, right about there. Okay, now I'm just gonna drive it in. So it doesn't move. And in theory, I can just pull. Belt starting to twist a little bit, unfortunately, on me. Maybe a bit of a flaw in the design there. So it started out real nice, and then uh, the belt started to twist. I didn't keep it straight. So we're gonna try and correct that. Try and pull it the other way. See if that helps. All right, there we go. I think that's my nicest one yet. All right, I think these two here are a win, so we're gonna go and install them. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna remove this old motor and speed controller and get in these two new ones here. Okay, so one quick thing here. When installing my motor, I noticed that uh, the pinion, once it's installed, uh, just based on the length of this shaft here and where it starts, it's not gonna mesh perfectly with this gear. And I have about two millimeters of space where I'd wanna move it slightly back. Um, so I'm actually gonna print a little motor shim here. I printed one right there out of PLA, uh, and then I realized I wanna do it out of PETG. 
So I'm gonna print another one. It's gonna slide in right there and that's gonna push the motor back slightly from this piece right here, which is the motor mount. And that's gonna make it so that my pinion lines up perfectly with my spur gear. And just a couple washers in between the motor and the mount here would have uh, slid the motor back a little bit too, but I prefer using these little discs that are super easy to put together in Tinkercad. So in the meantime, while that's printing, we can go ahead and try and replace these belts. All right, there's the old belt. Here's the new one. And I have to say the new one, it's the same size, but this old one is a lot more flexible and this new one's a lot stiffer. And if we look at the side here, you can see the teeth profile of both look pretty much the same. Uh, this one is made out of rubber. It does look like there's a thin strip of fiber of some sort uh, in the middle of the belt. Whereas this one is rubber on top and then it looks like all the teeth have fiber in them, so they're a very different belt construction, but they are the same size, so I'll throw them in and see what it looks like. All right, there's the first one. It seems to catch well in all the teeth. Okay, now that our little PETG motor mount shim is complete, we can go ahead and install it. Okay, so first we just lightly put it in its spot, so we can still slide it around. Now we're gonna slide the motor over so the spur and pinion are meshing nicely. And we'll tighten her up. Now we're gonna wire up our speed controller. In my case, the black and red are gonna get a T-plug to match all my batteries. And then the blue, yellow, and orange are all gonna link up with the motor here. All right, there we go. We got our motor and speed controller installed. Obviously I've left all of my wiring at the original length. I haven't cut it to size yet. You could definitely trim a couple inches off of each one of these wires here. But until I test a little more and decide that I'm 100% happy with this, I'm just gonna leave it how it is. So now the last piece of the puzzle is to add this guy and this is our censored cable. This comes with your motor and it makes sure that your speed controller always knows the position your motor's at. So uh, when you're starting from a standstill, you can get full power right away. There's kind of two places to install it on the motor. Uh, one is right here behind these wires, so that's not going to be great. And then the other one is right in the front there. So I'm going to get that installed there, and then it reaches over and is going to install into the far side of our ESC. There's the connection on the motor side. And then right there's the connection on the ESC. All right, here we go. First test with the new motor. Obviously, we've had a little rain, so it's a bit slippy out there. Thing's a beast. It's definitely working super well. It was working well before as well, but uh, it's definitely taken off like a shot right now. What a fun vehicle. So as you can see, the belt completely chewed through the pinion. I think what happened is that it got stuck somewhere up in the front here and then ended up getting jammed and then, and this 3D printed plastic just wasn't any match for the rubber. So it ended up uh, melting there. So I'm not sure, I don't think that's any fault of this belt. So we're gonna print that one again and then give it another shot. 
All right, so after replacing the belt, I just spent another 20 minutes outside pounding on it to see if I could get it to slip off. And it looks like it's all good. So I think actually what happened last time is I didn't have this tensioner uh, done up properly. And that caused too much slack in this belt, which caused it to slip off the front pulley. When it slipped off the front pulley, it caught on the side of it. And then this spun, but the belt did not. So I think we can safely say that these uh, much more common HTD 3M belts uh, work just fine in the MK Ultra as pretty much just as well as these Schumacher ones that are a lot harder to find and can be a lot more expensive. And that's all we got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this upgrade video on our MK Ultra, and maybe it'll inspire you to build one of your own. Again, as always, if you're looking for cool ideas of 3D printed RC projects to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, check us out, rcprinter.com. Till next time.